uh, building construction, project management, and so many more. So I've, I've learned a lot from him. And, and after my bachelor's degree, I came to US for my master's in construction management. Um, after that, I worked as a quality control engineer for ready mix concrete. Uh, then I also worked as assistant engineer, pretty much managing um, uh, change order process between design and construction, how to track it, managing the submittals, those sort of things. Um, currently, I'm working um, as a VDC engineer, VDC stands for virtual design and construction, where my approach is let's build the building first before we build into the ground so that you know we can always uh, push for a better product um, for our client. So this is a um, little bit about the company that I work for. It's uh, one of the largest um, um, North American general contractor. Um, and also we have a lot of project internationally. Um, all you can see here is different kinds of building that was done in 2019. Uh, you know, from stadiums, high rises, low rises, hospitals, uh, schools, um, and mostly in the building construction sector. So they put together all the buildings that has been completed in 2019, and then make a city called Turner City 2019. Um, 2020 is coming up shortly, so I could not put that on here, but um, you can see uh, the range of the project, type of the project, and complex city that we deal on day-to-day -day basis. Um, so the you know cutting edge technology becomes a very important workforce for us here at Turner Construction. So today I'm gonna um, shortly uh, define or at least share what the virtual design and construction uh, means to us at Turner Construction, and then I'll also share how we use that uh, idea uh, in our project um, with the, you know some examples. I will also share some of the current technology that has been used. Uh, recently to coordinate the construction project. Um, and then we'll share a benefit of um, virtual design and construction. Of course, you know, all that benefit comes with the challenges. So I'm gonna hit on that um, as well. And then finally, a few conclusion and then question and answer probably for 10 minutes. Um, the goal is to finish presentation in 30 to 40 minutes um, and then uh, question and answer for 10 more minutes. So what is virtual design and construction? Uh, People in North America have used this idea as you know interchangeably with the building information model, which means a, a, a digital replica 3D model that is information rich. Uh, the point to note is the information here. And then also people also refer sometimes as a digital practice. Um, there is a different standards and not like, a, these are not a national standards or the government standard. These are just the forum standards. We have a BIM forum. Um, that have developed a you know LOD requirement. LOD stands for uh, detail level. So if we were to model uh, footing, how detailed it needs to be, or column, what what is the detail window, and so on and so forth. So pretty much uh, they control or they share the idea of what would be a required detailing we need uh, on different phases of the project, from design to construction to the turnover. American Institute of Architect they also have standards on how the beam mean uh, in the in the contractual firm. A lot of the contractual language are written by AIA firms. So, so uh, it is a very important that you know AIA includes uh, beam uh, scope in their contract part. And then they also have GSA, which is more like a government organization building the federal building. They also have their own standards. All in all, for us um, at Turner Construction, it's about integrating our people with our process with the help of technology. So what does that mean and why that is important? Um, it's because you know, construction is a gigantic uh, you know, team in teams and you can think of uh, from owners, uh, architects, engineers, um, you know, general contractors, trade contractors, uh, public. So all of those people, right? It's a huge team. So we wanna make sure all the team have their voice, uh, concerns um, and everything is is there as a people is the who is going to build the project so that's why people piece is very important process um, is where turner construction comes and we have a different standards that that we need to follow as a company you know stand industry standards in some cases we go even above and beyond um, of our com company standards so that's that's another piece and technology is going to be the tools that we use to perform the task 
Um, so to have a successful project, we need to make sure people who are doing the work, um, processes that help us to get the job done, and then um, technology that helps perform the work needs to come together. And that is the virtual design and construction to us as a company. We wanna make sure we have win-win situation between, between our internal team, external team. And, and that's where uh, people, process, and technology comes. So, you know, why do, why, we, why do we need to go for VDC approach? And why it is so important for us? And you can see some of these funny examples. Uh, I just pulled this from the internet. Um, and one of the examples where you can see, you know, fire extinguisher is on the top and the, the person is not able to access. So one of the thing is, in mega jobs, we want to make sure that you know everything is accessible from the maintenance standpoint, from the design standpoint. So you know, <clears throat> simple example like fire extinguisher there, and you can see the bridges that they started to build from the opposite side, and bridge doesn't meet. Of course, we don't want that to happen, and you can see the smaller things like that. You know, the um, on the on the bottom right where you can see the column is not on the center there, it's supposed to be in center. Yes, it's a small thing, but if you look from the stresses and structural perspective, you know, it's not going to transfer the, the loads, you know, it is supposed to transfer. Um, some example, you know, bathroom, of course, that's not going to work. You can't have two people using that bathroom. And of course, you know, that's a flood. Um, and we don't want some, some of those happen on our, on our project. And you can see the emergency exit. I don't even think it will serve as emergency exit. So some of these issues from maintenance, access, um, you know, coordination, we want to avoid that. And that's where we see the value as a company on, on investing on the VDC. So that brings to another point, um, and I'm going to hit a little bit more on the technology side today. Um, uh, so you can see th these are the different tools, uh, some of the tools you may already be familiar with, and some of those may not be, but uh, pretty much, you know, AutoCAD, Revit, Navistore, Archicad, and, and it goes so on and so, so forth. But you can see the tools and what we do is, <clears throat> this is the one of the section, again, I pulled this from the internet as an example, and I think it shows um, one of the ceiling level of the project and, and, and can be seen very nicely, fire protection, um, you know, supply, duct, return duct, exhaust duct in different colors, lighting, and you can see all those services that needs to be in building to run a building. We model all of that and, and coordinate. So, um, you know, to get a little bit in, in deep here, you can see the structures, you know, mechanical services, uh, foundation, all of this, you know, we, we put it together and create a federated model or also called consolidated model. And why do we do, we do that? Is because we want to run a class test. So to make sure, you know, uh, nothing is classing with each other. That's our goal. So you can see on the on the left side there, hard class, which means that duct is, you know, penetrating the structural beam. Of course, that can't be done, you know, uh, unless it's, it's designed that way. But usually structural beams are not allowed, um, you know, to penetrate because of the shear and the, and the moment there. Um, so other could be soft class, which means, uh, let's say you are so you wanted to open the door, but you can't open the door fully, and that that are, that is also essential. If you think from the panels, you know, electrical panels, control panels, fire protection panels, you won't be able to do that. So that you know, soft class um, also is important. And other could be the logistic class, uh, and it's important to to think about as well because we're going to have to have a lot of logistics made to build the building. And um, I'll, I'll hit on that a little bit later, but also you can see, um, you know, the situation where logistic could clash with the actual building. And, and of course, that's not going to work. So our goal, you know, from the virtual design and construction approach is to mitigate all of these pro problems. Um, I know I'm going quick um, just because of the time, but I wanted to share, you know, VDC is not just used in the construction phase, but can be used you know, in various phases of the project life cycle. And looking from the design, you know, can be used for engineering analysis, documentation, um, you know, to document existing condition. And of course, it would be a great visual tool uh, so that design engineers, owners, 
everybody can share their ideas and make a better product. So when we jump into the pre-construction phase, we're estimating, beating, scheduling, logistic planning, constructability, analysis happens, and, and having that 3D model with the data helps a lot. Um, and I also touched on a coordination um, aspect already on the construction where you know we can do the trade coordination. So trades are, you know, mechanical trades are not going to work on electrical. Um, electrical trades are not going to work on the building control management. So we want to make sure that each trade have their, uh, you know, scope coordinated. And from that coordinated model, they would be able to generate shop drawing or the fab drawing, which is more or less, you know, detailed drawing with each and every information because design drawing won't have that detailed uh, dimensional information. They will just be designed in depth. So also, you know, can be used for model-based layout using the total station. So each point on the ceiling, you know, will be shoot and make sure that you know, it's on the right location. Um, of course, will be great tool to do the QC. And ultimately, you know, design is done for, for a year or two. Construction um, is done, you know, probably for three to four years, but building is going to be used for many, many years, 30 to 40 years. So the closeout document is very important. And we take that very serious in our company to make sure that you know owners will get the accurate as-built information for their facility management purposes, where they will have all the assets and warranty information uh, required. And of course, you know we can use it for many more. And because of time, you know I don't want to dive into it, um, but want to share the real example that uh, that I'm you know um, going to share here. And the project type is data center, and it's a million square foot. Um, and then budget is you know, roughly a little bit above the 500 million, and uh, I cannot name the client for the confidential purposes here. So um, you can see, um, and again, you know, this is a confidential project. I cannot share you all the details, but I can show you some screenshot here. This is a water treatment room inside the facility where we are doing the MEPF trade. MEPF stands for Mechanical, Electrical, Plumbing, and Fire Protection. So if you see that blue line there, that's a plumbing line. Um, of course, you know plumbing will also have the industrial supply return and all those good stuff there. And structural, you can see that red, um, um, you know, red color structural system. But nonetheless, this is a very complex room where you know there will be various trades coming around. So we want to make sure each one of them have a room. And all of these valves are supposed to, you know, function in a certain way. And we want to make sure they have a room. Um, and that's the whole reason why we do the coordination. And after each installation, um, sometimes, you know, after each trade installation, we go and do the laser scanning. I will touch on the laser scanning a little bit later to, to, to confirm that they install as per the coordinated model. And of course, you know, by doing that, it helps to detect installation error and plan accordingly to avoid the issue that could happen in the field. So another example is um, uh, you can see that big purplish colored duct um, on my right hand side. That's that's the constructed duct. I mean, you know, they say it's the as-built information, but when we scan, we found that duct was actually three foot you know, to the left. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, overlaying the beam and scan data help us to verify if the as-built information is actually as-built or not. And uh, it helps to, you know, catch the deviation that occurs in the model. And if, if that is following the spec requirement or not, usually that, you know, these kind of facilities are very spec stringent and we want to make sure that we're not missing anything. Um, floor flatness, a test for the equipment pad. Some of the equipment could be very, you know, like a susceptible to the flatness. So we need to make sure that they are flat, absolutely flat, and we need to verify that. And doing the laser scanning will help us. We can do the, you know, flatness test. And of course, can be used for as field purposes. Other other way that we use is for the logistical planning to build this mega project. You know, we need very sophisticated logistic planning. Um, and drawn could, can be very handy for us. And you can see here, all those, you know, LOS line are the underground, um, you know, utilities. I'm not gonna be 
you know, naming those because of the confidential purposes, but those are electrical uh, dock banks. And so they, they, they are huge. And of course we can't stop that, we can hit that line. And that's why uh, this logistical planning becomes nightmare, especially in this type, type of big jobs. Um, and on, on logistical, logistics will include temporal utilities, lay down airs, and uh, all those good stuff. And so if someone to go and dig here, they have to have a dig permit from us um, to verify that no utility will be on the ground or they have a plan in place uh, if they were to dig. Um, and you can uh, see from drone footage, we'll be also able to see the high level overview from week to week progress, how the work is progressing. Are we on the schedule? Are we, are we making the good progress? Um, um, even if the data that we get from the drone is not as precise as from the laser scanners, it's still, I think, you know, it's gonna be, it is very beneficial for us. And last use that we use for uh, scan for renovation, which means the existing facility, that we wanna capture the existing situation. And this is gonna be a good tool because we can, um, just by measuring with the tape or, you know, a total station, we're not gonna be able to get all the details you know, color, texture, size, and so on and so forth. But just by doing a one scan, you know, we'll be able to capture uh, the existing condition. And we can import this, uh, you know, scan into the Revit and get the plan section elevation quickly. Um, and even if we have a as built information of the facility have it, we still prefer to do the scanning um, just to make sure, you know, there is no missing info. It, it is gonna be quick accurate, efficient, and captures all the required information for us. So with that, I want to touch on some of the current technology that is, you know, going on in 2021 for the construction technology. Uh, and you can see, you know, I mean, a lot of iPads in construction job sites, you know, Internet of Things are already, you know, becoming a very common place. Um, and I wanted to kind of, you know, like, uh, I know I use some of the jargon, but I wanted to give a little bit of clarity there. Um, so you can see, you know, drone, um, and it's very simple and it could be used for, you know, street mapping, heritage mapping, conservation mapping, or anything, you know, for that matter, to capture the existing condition. It's, it's very useful and it's cheap, you know, it's not super expensive as well. And you can see on the right, that's like a laser scanner, um, which will be helpful to document interior and exterior of the building. Um, it, it, it will be good to, you know, have a laser scanning information of the important building that people care about and can be used for renovation and retrofit quite easily. Um, virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality, some of these terms are, you know, also being very much widely used. Um, in our job site, we use all of these technology, and you can see on the right, virtual reality is where you allow yourself, and you'll be in the full immersion, and it will help to do the design coordination and auditing, making sure all the systems are uh, there and, you know, supposed to function the way they are supposed to, you know, structure, architecture, mechanicals, electrical, and everything. Um, and on the left, you can see that, you know, a real construction job site where you walk with the iPad and you will overlay the site information with the coordinated model that will give you what is the progress on the job site, how we are doing, and is that installation accurate. And all of this will help to do the quality control of the project. So that said, what are the benefits? Benefit is, of course, you know, improved communication. In a big job, communication is the key, and construction is all about communication you know, from top to bottom, from owner to trade, um, and, you know, from the, from the companies to individuals. So it, it's very important that we have a good communication in place and everyone is on the same page. Um, it also helps to visualize the scopes between the trades. There is not gonna be any confusion, you know, who is gonna install what, because we already know what is their scope. And, you know, those scope will be modeled by the trade. So it's gonna be, uh, you know, quick, scope visualization tool. Um, quantity takeoff. Of course, you know, we can take up the quantity quite easily. Um, this will help to also reduce the change order. So change order are the 
are the you know document that occurs after the drawing is issued as a contract document. So after contract documents are issued, then they need to track if anything changes because of the site condition, because of the owner's changes, or because you know they had to change it because of some issues. Um, at that point, you know it becomes change order. And of course, we want to reduce the change order as much as possible because one change order could take anywhere between you know seven days to week, uh, two weeks. So we want to make sure we don't have that you know latency or the wait time. And another important key thing is a fabrication. We want to be you know 100% fabricated job site so that everything will be fabricated offsite and comes into the truck we just installed um, for most of the scope. Um, as much as we could. And the goal of this VDC coordination is to increase and optimize the fabrication. And ultimately, it will help to gain the schedule because time is money. You know, we, we don't have a luxury of time. And of course, you know, our contractual requirement will be to turn over the building on time. So having that coordination will help us to realize that, you know, we can optimize the schedule. And all of these things, right? Having lift change order, increased fabrication, uh, controlling on the schedule, having less problem or less fight on the job site, that will ultimately lower the cost. And that's exactly what we want to do. Um, and also gives us a higher safety and quality. Um, and safety is the number one priority for us as a company. Um, and it is important. All of, the, all of that to say, all of these things, you know, comes to the challenges. Um, and what are the challenges for us on the implementation? Um, it is a, you know, quite expensive initially because you know you need to pay for the people to model all the all the scopes. Uh, there will be big team involved on it. Um, you know, cost of people, process, and technology is going to be the overhead cost in the beginning, um, and that's a significant amount when you are looking at you know the the the, the labor cost here in the U.S. It's pretty expensive. And then also other um, challenges is project delivery method. Um, you know, not always we will have, you know, one type of contract. Sometimes lump sum, sometimes, you know, cost plus fee, sometimes GMP, which is a guaranteed maximum price at risk. Um, sometimes IPD, integrated project delivery. So depending on the contract, you know, how we can buy the scope will be dictated. So, you know, sort of this become a challenge. And so all of this to say, you know, if you, your leadership or your owners is not ready to pay for it or is not willing to, you know, invest in this process, then, you know, you may, be, you may not be able to get the things done. So leadership sponsorship, sponsorship becomes another key aspect. Not all the leaders understand the process or wants to pay for that. And also, ultimately, the trust in the process. If you don't have the, the trust in the process, then it's very hard for anyone to get the things done. And you know, especially trade partners needs to trust with the process so that they can say, okay, you know, we are good to go uh, there. So all of that to say, um, I want to conclude by saying, you know, with the uh, VDC approach, we're able to reduce the cost, reduce the schedule, that means optimize the schedule and create a better quality of the products. That said, any questions? Uh, if you all have any questions, please let me know. Presentation, Shima. It was good to know about how the systems work there. At least, what are the focuses within this uh, virtual design and construction aspects in your company? Uh, there has been no any comments or questions in the chat. If there is any questions, maybe we can come back later. So maybe uh, this would be the time for architectural officer to convey his thank you note or comments on how the content was. And as I said earlier, so I'd really like to thank SONA members and all of those guys who have been actively uh, playing a big role in making this happen. Architecture is up, so if you're ready, please go ahead. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sunil.
and uh, wonderful uh, uh, Suman. Yes, sir. Uh, very nice to thank you. See you and you know, I, actually, I'm very happy because in in the sense that uh, you, I still remember when you finish your finals and you said. So I wanted to get into construction management. And uh, I, I remember writing your recommendation as well. Yes, you know, thank you for that. Very happy that you have been a very successful man now with uh, doing so, so much work. And yes, uh, of course, uh, you know, at the same time, I'd like to also thank, you know, the uh, Sunil because He's also one of our first batches in Copa. And uh, I still remember that. And uh, great to see young guys like you, you know, doing so well. And it's, uh, it's a proud moment for, uh, you know, a teacher when he sees that your students do very well. Uh, anyway, coming to this topic, I think I'll leave the, can I leave the vote of thanks for, uh, I'll just give the closing remarks. But can I leave the vote of thanks to, I think, uh, uh, Navin Gishing? Is he there? Navin, are you there? Because he's the, he's the uh, you know, person looking after the subcommittee on making this happen. So maybe I, I think I owe it to him. But anyway, I'll just give it for the remark. Yes. Uh, we have been talking about, you know, a lot of things, and one of the things that uh, does come to my mind is the the imagery that one needs to do prior to the, the construction. I remember doing a project a long time ago. Those days, we didn't have the computers as such, and I was uh, doing the Suru Tobacco Factory in Simra, which is in Nepal, yeah, Bilgan's and we spent a lot of time in designing, a lot of time in detailing. Design was not very complicated, but a lot of detail. And each and everything was discussed thoroughly. In Nepal, I think clients don't go through that. Uh, the Suryo Tobacco uh, uh, factory that we were building up had ITC, Indian Tobacco Company people involved. And they had done a lot of factories, so and they were looking at everything minutely. You know? And this is where what we have today, the BIM. But the, that time we were doing the detailing so much that during construction, that after when it came to construction, I mean, nothing, you know, there was no hassles anywhere. Everything was, the blueprint was understood completely. And I think uh, uh, the con construction went on, you know, on schedule or uh, I think, and uh, the, pr the pricing, everything was understood very well. There were no you know, errors. So I suppose. Unfortunately, we don't do that in Nepalese part. Because many of our clients are not, you know, programmed that way, I would say. They would like, like to get things off. And uh, they wouldn't spend so much time in designing and detailing. And uh, this is why I think uh, today when we have talk about technology, as human presented, uh, these are things that, like you said, the benefits are there in the end. The cost, the schedule, the quality. Because you know everything is everything is known. You know, I always say this to our consultants, to my architects who work with me, to college students where I teach also. I tell them most of the time we always think design is just the four elevations in the plan. And then we say, you know, like, ah, damn good. Elevation, Ramla Ayavara is perfect. We got it, the building. We are very weak, and that's why buildings suffer in detailing. Our buildings suffer in detailing, and then because most of the time we are. And we spend so much time on the site going up and down, trying to explain to the contractor what we exactly want. And that, these are problems. 
Uh, Aile, what has happened in Nepal, even I, I'm sure we've sent invitation to Afghan as well, the contract association in Nepal. Uh, the contractors, they were more like business people. Today, the contracting company has got sons who have taken over the bit, over the companies who are themselves engineers from AIT and management and engineering from US or whatever. They've got the knowledge and they know, they understand technology, they understand drawing, they understand. So there is a shift and I'm sure when you talk about all these, uh, you know, the VDC, the, the virtual uh, design and construction thing, when you talk, uh, that becomes very useful together with them. Because now they understand. I think it's time that, you, that we are able to launch such things. This is, uh, I'm sure this will be the, uh, you know, starting of many such uh, events that uh, Sunil from Finland and Suman from USA and we here, we can promote the industry or give knowledge to the industry. Uh, therefore, that's why we invited the Society of Consulting Engineers and Architectural Engineering, engineering Firms, NEA, Tupsan, Sinep, you know, Structural Society and all that. So it is, uh, it is uh, uh, this thing that we need. Only thing, you know, like I said, uh, technology is there, then we can do the BIM. When the technology is not there, let's get the detailing done very well. Once you know that, then you, then you know what you want. So that is the area where we should really look at. And uh, yes, uh, I, you know, when, when, you, when you talk about uh, the, uh, the you know, about what the, that, yes, the benefits, I would just say the benefits is really two things that we need in Nepal is we don't want any VOAs, no variation orders. That is the thing that is really going up. That's why I was, I'm, I'm also trying to promote design and build. Once you have design and build, then probably you are responsible in not, there will be no VOA, you know, variation orders. Here, because we have a design, we have a contractor, there are gaps. And I think uh, th these, these, are, these benefits are very good. And of course, besides that, the quality is, is, is something that we suffer with also. We've seen lately in the news, a bridge is falling down. Um, the bridges which are being constructed right now. So all, all this is there. I'm sure the technology will come in and we'll uh, see improvements. And, but I really, I'm very proud by that the young architects like yourselves are doing so wonderful well in uh, foreign lands, which is, very, which is a very difficult job, I know that. And uh, you've really scored and uh, I'm sure many of our, uh, you know, uh, attendees today uh, will uh, be able to, you know, uh, be able to use some of the benefits from this lecture that we had today. Well, I, I like uh, Nabin. Are you there, Nabin? Nabin, I want Nabin to give the vote of thanks on our behalf. I don't know if he's there. Uh, if he's just sick. Definitely is. Right. So thank you very much. Navin is there, but his mic is still muted. Um, okay. Navin, can you hear us? Or if you unmute your mic, maybe you can also talk and then we can hear. Or maybe if Pradeep or Apple would kind of remind him. But meanwhile, so there have been a couple of uh, comments in the comment section and I'd uh, like to thank Rajesh for the overall perspective of why this uh, virtual design and construction is important. Of course, we as an Nepal BIM forum or as professionals that have been graduated from 
Nepal and working in different places. So uh, we were kind of uh, planning to work within the Nepalese community so as to at least provide some of the benefits that we have heard from or that we have had experience about. Uh, and that's how we have come to know together through Nepal BIM Forum as these things uh, are there. Uh, they do provide benefit and Nepalese community should also kind of get benefits from it, at least the minimum benefits I just by knowing. Uh, of course, uh, we have been working in different labels to promote these things and I would like to go to a couple of comments that was there in the chat session. Of course, uh, Sakar Srestha has his hand reason there. I'm not sure if you're able to talk, but I guess he's your old friend and he has commented there that it's wonderful to see you after so long, yes? If you could share your Bowling Green College this educational experiences against the U.S. educational system, so I think. Yeah, it was a, it was a really good experience. Um, I learned a lot. Um, like I said, you know, especially the, one of the things that I learned from U.S. educational system is the flexibility. You know, just because we study architecture doesn't mean we just have to design. There is a lot of area where we can work, and one of the things that I learned. You know, going to construction management program where there is a lot of variation of the students, you know, business, um, you know, undergrad business, grad in construction management, undergrad engineers, uh, grad in construction management. And, you know, like that, that gave me a very unique perspective. Um, and also, you know, it's like a global experience where you see the students from all over the place, um, you know, trying to learn, trying to understand what the management of construction is. Like Rajesh Sir said earlier, you know, it is a, it is a one of the things to think about. We can design great, but if we can't build great, then that's when we fail, and we don't want to fail as a you know um, as a, as a, as a as a as a professional. So, Bowling Green suddenly prepared for me that, um, and as soon as I I I was almost almost about to be done with my master's, I did an internship as a ready mix concrete uh, company. It's like you know Pontchartrain ready mix. So I was a quality control engineer, pouring seven thousand cubic yards of concrete. Um, on a night, so it was a lot of concrete for a 700 million breeze, um, breeze that, that we built. And after that, I joined the SSOA group, also as, you know, Ball and Green prepared for me that as a VDC engineer, and I was able to build the, the Giga Factory um, in Nevada um, for a Tesla car, if you all know what the Tesla car is. Um, so I was able to, you know, get hands-on for the Model 3 production line as well. And after that, I joined the Turner to build uh, you know, different facilities for our, one of our companies to find and, and ever since I'm, I'm doing this. And, and like I said, you know, um, Pulsar Campus and Bowling Green has prepared me um, to take on the challenges that exist, not just in, in local area, but in the global uh, facet. The only one thing that I would say is to all the, all the Nepalese, uh, you know, professional that our education is not weak. But we need to think and push ourselves every day and be honest about ourselves. And, you know, like every time we draw a line, we have to ask ourselves, are we being honest to the society, to the people we're trying to serve? Are we being rational for the future generations to come? Because once we build it, it's very hard to, hard to you know, um, dismantle it and then again rebuild it. So something that, you know, as, a, as an individual, as a professional, we need to think about that. And I think if we can, can do that, um, um, I don't think education, null experience will be a barrier for us, um, you know, for the quality of construction. Thank you. Uh, couple of comments about your presentation. Thank you, you. There are thanks from Srima, Okendra, Sorup, and most probably all. And, uh, now insurance connection is not working properly, I guess. Uh, but nevertheless, of course, we architects can uh, think how the design would be in our heads, but these kind of tools definitely provides even the layman's to understand better as how the designs are being done and uh, how they should be constructed. Of course, when we talk about the whole life cycle, there are different benefits at different phases. And one of the main uh, drawbacks, not to say as drawbacks, but uh, let's say one of the challenges that our Nepalese engineering community faces is because it's somehow new technology, even though it's already 30 to 40 years old or even before. Uh, we know how 
things happen, but there are not enough competent engineers who are really able to do it. But of course, uh, together we can do that, and hopefully in the near future that we can see that it's going to happen a pretty much uh, in the near future if we work together. And also Schumann Appel's comment, wonderful to see you after long many years. Uh, I think it was the same, I guess that was from the, yes, that was earlier uh, discussed. Uh, so yeah, uh, maybe... one thing that I would say on the educational forefront is, you know, every week we just had to do the nine hours of study. If I remember in Pulsu campus, it was all day, you know, every day for five, six days. And I feel like uh, we take a lot of credit hours um, and here it's uh, very flexible. And like I said, you know, I was construction management student, but if I want to take a business course, I can take it. If I want to take a computer science course, I can, I can take it. And I actually took it, you know, I took it to learn how the artificial intelligence and, and computer vision can be used in construction, which is, you know, even a very cutting edge for the US. So I would say, you know, it's very important to have an education or campus wide program where if you want to take some courses, because you want to learn about it, it sh there should be a way rather than just having all the courses that are, you know, just fixed. So here they have a lot of flexible courses on top of like few courses that you took to measure on that, that area. So that's the one, only one of the differences. But other than that, I think, um, um, you know, they have a assignment all the time rather than, you know, depending on the final exam. Um, yes, they do have a final exam, but it's not like as tough <laughs> as we have. <laughs> You know, it's quite easy um, uh, because you are putting, you know, time every week um, and a lot of self-study and, um, and and honestly, they'll prefer for your interest rather than what is dictated. Uh, and something that I felt, you know, at least in in, in my days in Tulsa campus, it was not that, you know, I had, we had to finish all the courses, whether I like it or not, um, I just have to finish it. And also, I, I, I think that as a, you know, good or bad both, because good is I would be able to learn something that I'm not willing to learn. Um, and also, you know, that's the one thing. But, but again, you know, I think having an interdepartmental course, um, you know, whether it's in computer science, businesses, um, you know, or, or any, any, any for that matter, you know, would be very helpful thing to have um, as a leading institution, um, um, you know, program that I was in, you know, but other than that, I think I, I would say a lot of similarities to draw between the courses in Nepal and here. Sunil, I think uh, Navin's connection is not there. So when, when it's time, you know, I may just give him the vote of thanks if he's not there. So when, when the time is there, when you have wanted to end. Yeah? Our time is kind of was for one hour. We are already a little bit near to the closing session. I guess we are seven minutes from the schedule time. Uh, if Abdul has something to say, or if there is some discussions that uh, we would like to proceed, of course, otherwise we can also go to the board of thanks in a way. Abdul, any comments or views from your side? Of course, uh, it, do we have been working with Sona and I have personally forget to congratulate the, congratulate the new executive committee to this is the first time we are working together with this new committee. Of course, there are networks and we know each other from different perspectives. And of course, Navin Sir is also involved in a Baldwin forum as a member there. Definitely, personally, congratulations from my side to Raja Sir and all the committee yeah. members. Thank you, Sunil. Just one question. It's both of you, actually. Mm -hmm. You in Finland, Someone is in, the, is in USA. Mr. Kopa is from Pulchok. How do you get connected? Uh, the first primary was, uh, as said, so from Nepal Beam Forum, we were working around as how these digital construction tools could provide benefit for the Nepalese industry. And Suman was also interested there. Of course, we have all the different connections. Last time we had a presentation from Suman's colleague, Danjit, too. He was from Australia. So uh, most of the professionals who are kind of working at the moment are planning or wanting to contribute. And 
uh, it's glad to say that Nepal Women Forum is at least a small platform at the moment to kind of come together and promote these activities together. So Nepal Women Forum is the first one. Okay, very good. Yeah, and the, the way and to add on that, you know, when I did my uh, presentation at, you know, Autodex University last year, um, or actually year before, um, you know, it was about laser scanning and how we use the laser scanning uh, and that was the global conference with 15,000 attendees, and it was a it was a very good experience. And from that, you know, um, Donjit and I discussed that you know it is it is a time that we share the knowledge, um, and of course, you know, that would be a starting point is the Nepal Beam Forum. But obviously, it'd be good to be engaged with um, you know contractor association or uh, you know uh, other governmental agencies so that we can actually bring some changes to the construction from the supply chain perspective. And I see that a lot of gap that I'm seeing is our, you know, workforce. We need to develop the workforce. We need to train them. We need to, you know, we need to build, we need to train, you know, good electricians, good, good plumber, good, good dock feeders, and, you know, group, good brick layer. And so many of those things needs to be done. And if we really want to build a nation that is, be, you know, going to be based on the quality. And for that, I thought, you know, this is going to be first step where you know, we try to share right, our idea and, you know, and again, you know, I saw one question where it says, what is the difference? And I think the major difference that I see between a developed world and our case is uh, the labor force. You know, labor force here is very intelligent and they have a lot of experience. They can contribute intelligently. A lot of times they provide feedbacks to the engineers, architects. Hey, you know, this detail that you have worked may not work because I've been doing this for 30 years. Can you give a second thought? And, and like I said, you know, in our case, I feel like, you know, um, we need to start, you know, like training and building the nation from the bottom up, up approach, uh, not just the top down approach. And I think if we can do that, uh, you know, we'll be able to build uh, good, good buildings. And, and one of the, one of the things that I, I say is I was looking at the, you know, view from Dara and I, my heart broke, you know, we have all the concrete I mean, it could be all glass, right. And it still look beautiful. And, and I was thinking about it, like, can we have all the cotton wall panels? And answer is most likely no, because to have a cotton wall panel, we need to have a, uh, you know, worker that can actually put, you know, like actually put the cotton wall in there. And for that, we need to have a lot of coordination because that system needs certain kind of uh, detail. For that, we need that kind of builder. So, you know, it goes on and on, and it's not just one thing, and one person is not going to do a whole lot, but, uh, you know, uh, like Sunil said, you know, it's a, it's a time where, you know, we all are trying to do something uh, for the betterment of our industry in whole. Yeah, Subhan, I think you're right. Like I said, uh, the scenario of contractors, what I knew them 40 years ago, and now what I'm seeing, uh, there's uh, there's a lot of change and uh, different this thing. Uh, by the way, before we, end, I just want to ask you also. You know, I was uh, the president of the Society of Consulting and Architecture Engineering Firms the last year before it, uh, you know, and uh, I signed a lot of, uh, um, uh, you know, mutual understanding with uh, different uh, countries and associations, one of which was the Association of uh, uh, Civil Engineers in USA. Ne please. Oh, I yeah. think, please, engineers in USA. Now, I, I need both of your help because uh, one is in Europe, one is in America. Uh, is there similar groups of architects where Sona can now make a, a understanding, and then it, it can you know we can learn a lot from the people out there. Like today, we got new technology on the VDC. Similarly. We can pass on some of the these things, and uh, yes. there be a you know mutual thing of working together in improving the you know the scenario in Nepal. Maybe training, maybe other things as well. Uh, yeah, it is the AI here. You know, AI is the governing. NCARB is the is the is the body that licenses architect, uh, national accreditation of architectural board. But once that is done. A lot of folks join the AIA, so AIA is the governing body for um, for architects, AGC, uh, Associated General Contractors, 
is the body that you know governs um, um, general contractors and you know for mechanical electrical contractors so there's a lot of bodies but i would say aia and agency would be a good one to to collaborate yeah aia yes so we can collaborate with them but that's but i'm looking for groups of nepalese architects who are you know because they would be more uh, you know more encouraged or more uh, liable or more helpful towards nepal think of, that's why i got collaboration with other you know like Nepalese engineers. So, as you said, so it's kind of if there are Nepalis group of architects who have these kind of organizations or something, that might be the easy way to kind of get these things further. But of course, all the countries will have their association of architects. And if we want to contribute or collaborate with them, and of course, there would be a possibility. And the plus point is because we are kind of in different places we can of course make these kind of uh, discussions if they would be interested to have this kind of collaboration aspects uh, uh, for european part uh, normally as per my understanding i don't know if there is any kind of architectural associations where the Nepalese are actively involving but of course in the uk there are some uh, engineer groups and maybe there are some people who are also actively involved through the non-residence Netflix uh, association. So uh, I can uh, start the discussions uh, around if, if there would be engineering associations that would like to have collaborations with Sona, definitely, yes. Yeah, I, I think I had the uh, engineering association from uh, UK. They came to talk to us about, when I was mm -hmm. in the consulting company president, uh, they came to talk about uh, the the ra railroad, you know, the, the, the trains, underground trains, and things like that, because we're talking about. So these sort of things, you know, maybe architects, so that architects with Sona, how we can, of course, not that we don't want the engineers, but preferably architects would be better. If you can explore that, it will be great. So we can try it from our side. Of course, we'll try. And, and before I pass on to Apple, there was a small question or comment uh, in the chat. So. So they ask if uh, there has been any kind of uh, technologies around laser scanning or litter that have been installed on different uh, phones or tablets and are being used in the US. Do you happen to uh, know anything about it? Yeah, so usually, you know, the yes, uh, Apple and some of the, you know, smartphone companies are trying to use their, uh, you know, cameras to get the LiDAR scanner. But I don't think you know it's going to be a it's going to be a year or two where we'll be able to scan and um, you know and be able to use it for construction purposes. However, there are some cheaper uh, cameras, you know, uh, BLK three sixty um, and and some other cameras. You know, they're pretty cheap and can be used to do the do the uh, uh, you know scanning. Also, there is um, I would say few technologies out there. Um, where you know you uh, take a lot of photos, series of photos, and then you uh, upload that into the platform, and they'll give you the uh, laser scanning data. So, uh, short answer, no. Um, uh, long answer, yes. I mean, you know, um, if we need reliable data, probably that's not the route to go. I would say, um, but you know, definitely something is better than nothing for sure. The technology that we use, just uh, an overview of what is here in Finland or where I'm involved is we are taking this 360 degree pictures from a camera called Matterport and they have this automated 360 pictures that could be used to download different mesh objects or even if you use different other application convert that to the point clouds and so on. But nevertheless, I will over to you if you have some comments, points, what you want to put in for, because you are already over the schedule, I guess. So please, up here. Thank you very much. Uh, this day, thank you, Simon, uh, for your very presentation. And uh, it's a very, a very challenging task that we're lacking in our application technology. And if you realize that it's very right, that you can answer them in a very way, way, then it is experience or a question about the staff and others. So I, I'd say that the things that you mentioned about the LED and the and, and uh, I think that you mentioned about the workflow and the workflow that we would like a, a larger scale. We even have the extension workflow that we can be reliable and meet the deadlines and also, also the mentioned about the workflow that we the lacking in the regulation that we need to work on that. And also 
that. Mm, uh, but I also see it as a very good opportunity to leapfrog in this whole because in the global term, everyone is working, everyone is learning in this, in this platform, and this is um, you know, the safe platform. So, so once in this, uh, you know, that's the opportunity that they are available to. So the, the stability or as the units available in the market and technology and improving day by day is what allows us to. Yeah, I'm not able to upload the PDF here, but I will share on the Facebook group. It's a bit difficult for me to hear everything, but I guess definitely we are up for the future collaborations too. And uh, maybe I would now like to ask Rice Tabasar again to have some concluding remarks or a poll of thanks for all the participants for investing their time and listening to us. Well, thank you again, Sunil, and uh, thank you, everyone. I think, uh, uh, you know, the, the presentation, of course, is, uh, is very good. And uh, I think the questions were not there, to be very honest. The questions were not there because I think uh, the scale of, scale of uh, you know, the project we were showing is very much different than the scale that we have here, number one. And uh, that way, probably, you know, it was something that, uh, you know, the technology which is not available, we were just seeing it as if it is something that we dream of. So uh, I'm sure. After a few after a few years, maybe when technology does come up here as well, it'll, we'll have questions. As of now, even you know, like like computers, like I said, when we started, we never had these computers. But now you are you are the computers. You are driving it like motorbikes. You know, going around with it. There's so many options that we have. So it, it is a process that will come. And I'm, but nevertheless, I think it's a very great. Uh, uh, in a presentation in the sense that yes uh, simple things can do it can better the whole effect of the construction at large and uh, in simple words i think like I come back again get your objective correct and then your construction will be okay if you don't have your objective correct you naturally have you run into you know muddy waters at times uh, anyway, I think uh, on behalf of Sona, on behalf of all the participants, I'm very sorry that we have to do it very early morning for Suman. I sorry, it's not uh, early for me. It was good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. It was not early for you, but also for uh, Sunil, it's a working day for him. You probably are about what? Uh, one o'clock, two o'clock or something like that. It's fine. Now. Sorry? It's five in the evening now. Oh, five yes, in the evening. Well, not yeah. bad. So you're not very far behind. <laughs> no. So anyway, yeah, this thing. Uh, unfortunately, from today, we are having a lockdown. So from ten, for 10 districts, Kathmandu included. 
I hope uh, you know we will get out of all this. And uh, uh, you know, Suman, you are in also in in a very dangerous area. The USA is stopping and COVID cases. But don't worry, India is coming up very fast. Nepal is also galloping in its own way, but population not big. But stay safe. And uh, definitely we hope to see you again. Uh, and we hope to see you as, uh, you know, very uh, effective and very, uh, you know, encouraging, very knowledgeable SONA, SONA members also. And so that you can carry our message around the world. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate it, you know, for uh, having this uh, wonderful opportunity for me. And also, you know, given all the lockdowns, COVID, and all the situations, um, you know, I request all of you to be very careful. And, you know, at least that I can, I was lucky that I did not get the COVID. I also have a second vaccination, but, you know, not everyone's are in that situation. Um, so I request all of you to be safe, sound, and if anything that I can do, personally and professionally, please do let me know. And really, um, you know, uh, appreciate it that SONA 14th executive member, and I'm very much uh, looking forward to be involving uh, in other activities through the SONA as well. So uh, appreciate it, uh, everyone, and really appreciate it, positive chat and feedback from so many people. Um, you know, uh, I know all of those folks are very dearest to me and really appreciate it. I'm not gonna take a name, um, but yeah, so I, I miss you all and uh, I'm sure you know we'll see very soon once uh, COVID gets normal um, and probably can have a talk in person. So hoping for that. And thank, uh, you. thank, you. thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. All right. Okay. Have a safe time. Thank you. Thank you, Sunil. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you. I just hope to talk to you some other time too. Yeah. We can look into future collaborations, definitely. Talk to you later. Yes, right. Have a safe time. Bye-bye. Yeah, same to you. Bye-bye.